right, so what we've done is, <coughs> for my last part of this video, we have measured my compression ratio, uh, which was basically, it should be uh, 8 to 1, and my compression ratio is now 8.03. So I'm well within my compression ratio, I shouldn't have a problem as regards that. What we're going to do on this video is we're going to do our valve clearance. As you can see, I've just got some ordinary um, children's plasticine, nothing special. You can get special stuff for this, but um, it's just easier to use this, I find. And what I've done is, I don't know if you can see, this plasticine has basically got six lines in it. And I've cut, I cut the plasticine into two, which is left three, sorry, which is left two lines. This plasticine measures 3.3 mil thick. So, and all I really need, as long as I've got one mil of it clearance, I'll be all right. So basically, we're going to build the engine. And when our valves come down, also when we turn the engine, as you can see, obviously, pistons go up and down. So as all the cylinders are moving up, what's going to happen is the valves are going to press into the um, plasticine. And once they press into the plasticine, once I take the engine back off, I'm going to measure how thick the plasticine is. Now, if they don't hit the plasticine, we know we've got at least 3.3 mil clearance, so we're fine. If they do hit the plasticine, we've got to measure the thickness. And if it's less than one mil, I'm going to have to get a thicker head gasket. If it's not, I'm going to be fine. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this into three sections again. So as you can see, there's six lines in the plasticine and I've just basically cut it into three. So I've, left, I've been left with two lines each. So I'm just going to peel them off. Put one there. I don't need the other one. Now, this is where you have to be careful, just get them in the right place. You've got to know on your engine, some pistons have a special um, lip where your valves actually go into, little cups. These ones don't. So what you need to do is you need to find out where your valves are going to hit, or not so much hit your piston, but come close to your piston. So you need to find out where that is. All I'm going to do is literally put the plasticine on, I'm going to bend it round. I know my valves hit here and here and here and here on my piston. So I'm just going to put this where my valves are going to hit. And all I'm going to do is just flatten down the end just so it grips. And again, flatten down the other end just to give it a bit of a grip. You, you do need to make sure your pistons are completely clean so there's no oil or anything left on them because otherwise the plasticine won't um, won't really uh, sit on it very well. I'm just going to push down the middle just so I haven't I haven't pushed down on on the plasticine in the middle of it so I should get a nice strike pattern. If I don't, like I said, if, if we don't get any um, strike patterns on the plasticine then well we know we're, we're definitely 100% good but if we do we can measure it. So again just bend the plasticine round, squeeze the end out. I'm squeezing the ends here because I know these, at these ends there's going to be nowhere where the pistons can actually hit so I know I'm not going to affect anything. And just push down the middle just to give it some sort of gap. Now just push down to make sure it's actually sticking. Now you really only really need to do this on one piston. You don't need to do it on all four. As you can see, I am doing it on all four, just because at the end of the day, I might as well, just in case for some reason, one of my plasticine happens to lift off and I've got three other chances to get it. The strike pattern, if it hits the plasticine, should be identical on all of them. So you only really need one. I'm just kind of doing all four of them, just so in case I have a problem with one of them, I know I'm going to at least get some sort of strike pattern on my plasticine. What you do want to make sure is when you put your head gasket on, before you put your head on, just make sure the plasticine, that's the wrong way around, it's that way, just make sure the plasticine doesn't, your head gasket clears the plasticine. So in other words, you're not going to get um, any problems here, so that the head gasket isn't going to affect the plasticine. So I'm just going to move these pistons up, just to make sure, as we can see, everything is fine. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the pistons 
so they're all in the middle. And then with my original timing marks, I can then turn the engine to super. I'll show you that once we actually um, get the head on. Right, now it's time to put the head on. Right, so what I'm going to do is now just put the head on, try and get it lined up as close as I possibly can first, just to make it a bit easier. And just rest it on there. Now, before I go any further, what I have done on this particular head is I've replaced all of the uh, followers. Well, they're called followers, they're called tappets, hydraulic tappets, hydraulic followers. There's a lot of different names for them, but basically um, we're replacing all these and they're very, very simple. They just push straight in. So all I'm doing is, I took the old ones out with a magnet and I'm just getting the new one, just pushing it down, make sure it's nice and straight and that's it, it goes down. It's as simple as that. It really is as simple as that. There's nothing to it whatsoever. These are called hydraulic tappets or high hydraulic followers because basically the oil goes into them and it makes the gap up so they're basically self-adjusting. You can get solid followers. Solid followers are normally on engines, say on like rally engines and stuff like that when you put a bigger cam in. I think it's 276 degree cam. After that, you really need solid followers because the hydraulic followers just can't keep up. 300 degree cams, 320 degree cams, you definitely need hydro you definitely need solid followers. And then you can shim them. But anyway, that's a complete another video. So all I'm doing is, like I said, just again, make sure it's nice and straight. Push it down. This one doesn't want to go down. There we go, nice and straight. And it'll go down as simple as that. I'm just going to get the old head bolts. Because they're stretch bolts, you don't want to put your new head bolts in because if you put your new head bolts in and torque them, you're going to have to replace them again. Like I said, I'm lucky enough that I can reuse the metal head gaskets. If you can't, well then it's just obviously, it, it can be frustrating. Um, but I can reuse my metal head gasket and I can put my old... Um, head bolts in just for what we're basically doing today just before I do that I've got an old piston here off an engine and as you can see there's little marks in it now you can only really see two that's sometime in this pistons life the the timing belt has actually snapped and this is basically what happens as you can see it marks the piston now it obviously bends the um, the valves but to be fair, this piston would still actually be okay. You could still get away with that piston. It hasn't actually uh, put a hole in the piston, but you can see it's damaged it. So that's what happens when a timing belt snaps. Gives you some idea. Now it can obviously also damage the piston, but um, on this one it's actually okay. Now I'm just going to pop these down. Hopefully I've got them kind of close. Might need to do a bit fiddling them all down first. I normally just like to put the the corner ones down and just to see if I can turn them into the actual block because then if you know you can turn the four corner ones into block you know you've kind of got your engine lined up right. Now that's not quite going in so just a bit there we go just a bit of a wiggle. That one is now gone in. Same on this one maybe. No, that one's going in. And that one's going in. And that one's going in. Now, so what we need to do is we need to tighten these in a special way with a special torque. Now, what you have to do is you have to do it in, in, a, in a special way so you make sure the head gets tightened evenly. The way to do it is you do the two middle ones first and you basically then corner to corner in a try well in, in a at an angle just like you would to put your wheel on so you go the two middle ones and then you do opposite corners so we go that one 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 it's very simple it's the same with all heads and at least this way you know you get it tight and nice and evenly now the actual torque settings for a Cosworth is 25 newtons, 50 newtons, and then 90 degrees and 90 degrees. 
that will tighten the head properly. Now, I'm not going to do this properly because these are stretch bolts and I don't want to put them all the way down. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to go 25 newtons, 50 newtons, and then 90 degrees, or maybe 100 degrees. The reason why I'm going to do that is because my metal head gasket doesn't really shrink like a, a normal head gasket would. So I can kind of get away with it. But if you've got a normal head gasket, I would advise you to tighten your head up properly to do it this way. But obviously the problem is it can be quite expensive because you, you know, you're going to have to maybe get new head gaskets and stuff like that. I'm just looking in the way I can do this on this particular car with this particular head gasket. Now a good tip is when you're using a torque wrench is after you finish with it, set it back to zero because then you won't stretch the spring inside and it will work and last a lot better. So the first one's going to be 25 newtons. I'm just twisting the torque wrench until it goes click. As you can hear that goes click. Can you see that right? Move to the next one. And then Now we need to do the same again, but turn it up to 50. Now what we need to do is do, well, properly would be 90 degrees on each of them and then another 90 degrees. I'm not going to do that because this is not going to be ran, this is only a test. What I am going to do, and I also forgot to bring my angle gauge home with me, so I can't do it. But I'm going to basically just going to get a big bar now and turn these 90, 100 degrees, and then I should be fine to do what I basically need to do. Now, what I'm going to do is, technically, you should have an angle gauge here now. I wouldn't be doing it this way if I'm doing this properly in the sense of to run this engine, but because I'm not... I've got to do now two 90 degrees. Now, I'm not going to do two full 90 degrees. I'm going to certainly do one. And basically, we know 90 degrees. That is now straight. So I know that that is one 90 degrees. Might be a few degrees off, but it's not going to really worry me for what I need to do. This is a problem now. This can all move. Now, now, that is 90 or close to <coughs> um, all over. What I might now just do is maybe a 45. So, now this next bit is very important. <coughs> we have the inlet side here and the exhaust side here. So you do have to get your cams in the right place. Because if you don't, if the looks are different on the inlet to the outlet, your engine might run, but it's not going to run properly. If you've got sports cams, or even, you know, 280 degree, 300 degree cams, it is so important to get them on the right side. On a Cosworth, we have a cam here, and you can see in the middle of this one, we, there is a line. So, on the middle of this one, you can see a line in between the actual cam, and that's where it sits down as opposed to the other one. The other one in between the lugs is completely smooth. So the other one in between the lugs is completely smooth. This is the exhaust side. Now, so it's very important to get your cams on the right side. And on the Cosworth, well on most cars it just depends, they might mark them slightly differently, but it just depends. Not only that, these little shells here, so we've got little um, arms, well not little arms, but little shells that basically hold down the cam. Now each one of these is numbered. So that one says number seven. All right, so that says number seven. And it's important on these cams, the um, exhaust cam is marked with number one. So we, we know it's one, two, three, four, five. This one says six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's important even to get them right. Now what I'm gonna do, because once I've done this, I can actually leave these cams in place. Even though I'm taking the, the head back off, 
but I can leave the cams in place. So I'm going to kind of tighten these down properly the way you should. So I have a glass here filled with oil and it's 1040. It's the oil I'm going to use to actually build the engine with. Again, this can be the messy part now. So what I'm going to do is just put oil inside the race where it actually sits and also on top of the tappet. So I'm going to just put oil everywhere. Everywhere it runs and even on well everywhere on the looks on, in the middle absolutely cake this full of oil now we can actually you know, sit that down properly I will be um, taking off the, the oil seals here but we'll do that later on we can do that we can change oil seals with the cam in place so what I need to do is get the right numbered little cases now so I need two three four and five now we have two three four and five what you have to be careful of is now and be aware of because we are pushing this down Technically, there's going to be some valves that are going to be open or even slightly open. We have our pistons set all in the neutral position. So, we're okay to tighten these down and allow some valves to open because we know they're not going to hit the piston. So, we're going to be okay. But you have to do that before you go any further because if you start tightening down these bolts and they hit, the, 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 um, the pistons are in the wrong place where they're going to hit the pistons and they're going to damage the valves or even damage the piston so it's something you have to be aware of now I'm just going to put this down that's number two number three number four and number five and then we have um, I think it's 13 or 14 mil nuts that go on here and there's two allen keys that actually go on the end one and there's two washers for each one so you put the washer on first then you put the actual nuts on what I'm going to do there's no point really filming anymore it's going to be exactly the same so I'm going to put all these on just hand tight and then do the same with this one and once they come to tighten, we'll turn the camera back on. Now, as you can see, we've got them all on. None of them are tight yet. Same with the head. Start from the middle out. Now, you can actually do one at a time, but you start from the middle and go out. These are between 22 to 24 newtons. So I'm just going to do it at 24. People think these are really tight. These aren't tight. So I've gone to 24 newtons. People just assume that these have to be really tight and you can soon damage these and round them very easy. So, just have to now, see, simple as that. So again, screw that one down until we hear the click. Now. And I can actually leave these in now. These are going to be no point in taking these back out because I can actually take off the head with these still in. Just have to be aware of that your valves will be sticking down, so just be careful of your head. So I can see now that number number four and yeah, number four is definitely the valves have been pushed down. So this is why you put your pistons all in the middle of your engine, so you don't cause any problems between anything. Now, I'm going to do the other one. There's no point in me filming it because it's exactly the same. I've got to 
put two Allen keys in here, but I'm going to leave them out for the minute because again, that's not going to cause me any problems for what I need to do with this particular test. So I'm going to torque these ones down again and then we'll turn the camera back on. Now, this is where it kind of gets interesting. Because what we need to do now is, I've obviously torqued all the, the two top cams. As you can see, on the top cams there's these two little arrows. Them arrows have to be pointing together. That's the top marks of a Cosworth. And the way you can actually check is if you look through the gap, you'll see where the little, uh, there's two little lines where they meet up. So them two need to be dead straight. That's simple enough. This is for the um, ignition, but we're not going to have to worry about this this time because obviously we're not starting it. But this does have a mark, but we don't have to worry about it. The next one we have to worry about is the bottom cam. Now, the bottom cam mark, there's a, there's a notch cut out on the um, bottom cam and it just lines up with a, a C on the engine which is I think it's, it's, it's like 11 o'clock but you'll see the way you'll know you've got it top dead center is what I'm going to use I've got a, um, a knife because I'm in the kitchen so I'm going to put it down cylinder number one and I'll actually be able to turn the bottom cam and I'll, I'll then be able to see the knife coming up so I know when I'm at top dead center. Now what we do have to be careful of, number two and on the, in, on, the, on the exhaust side and number three on the inlet side, the valves are open. But that's to do with the two pistons in the middle. We, don't, we just have to be careful with pulling the pistons the right way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spin the bottom and as I spin the bottom, the um, the fork will, or the, the the knife will be actually turning up, will be lifting up. Now, if this way, if, if it locks and gets jammed, you're not going to do any damage, but you know you have a problem somewhere. So you can't really do any damage at this stage, but we hopefully it won't lock on us. So all I'm I'm not even going to bother looking at the bottom time mark. All I'm going to look at is the actual um, fork that's in the engine. So if you just watch out for the fork, the fork will rise. I have the bottom mark on the seat and I have the two top cams with them little triangles facing towards each other. Now, normally at this stage, I would put a special locking tool in there to lock them two cams, but I actually got it, it's at the shed. So I can't do that. So hopefully these won't move. But what I have, what I think has happened, this cam, especially this one, it is on the point of where it's just going to flip itself and it's already flipped itself so i think at this stage i've i've hit the plasticine on cylinder number four so i'm going to ignore cylinder number four and hopefully just go off the cylinders one two and three especially two and three should give me my best um marks hopefully right so once you've got all the marks lined up we'll then put the timing bar on we'll start from the bottom it's normally easier to start from the bottom so again, this is a timed mark here, but I'm not going to worry about that yet because uh, we're not starting this, so that's for the ignition. So we don't have to worry about that for this, for this case. I'm just hoping the two top cams aren't going to move on me. That's going to be my problem. So that's, get that. So it's on its loosest. This is just, without the cam locking tools, it's just making my life a little bit harder. And I know I'm in front of the camera at the minute, but I just have to be, unfortunately. Now, we'll get this. Now that is the timing belt 
on. But what we need to do, we need to tension it now. Um, and it's very simple, as you can see, this, this tensioner is on a cam, and as you can see, the cam is moving. So that tightens the belt, and that obviously loosens the belt. So you can see how that, how that actually works. It's very, uh, very clever. I said I would prefer to be able to lock them cams together, but I can't do it, so I'm not going to worry about it. There is a special tool to put on the end of the timing belt and to get you an exact mark, but you just cannot get them. They're a Ford only tool and they are just so, so difficult, but I have one. Now, this is like so rare from what I can work out and I've never ever seen another one. And even when I got this one, I even tried searching and I couldn't find one of them. This is a proper Ford Cosworth timing belt little machine. It works on little numbers. Now, it, you can get a modern version, but the, the number ratios are different. So it, you can't really use it. You don't really need one. You can, do, you, can, you can use your hand to do it, but I have one. Basically, hopefully you can see this. I don't know if you're gonna be able to, but as the belt tightens, you can see that little yellow arrow moves across. Now, the magic number is between nine and a half to 10 and a half. That's the magic number. So, what you do is you put it on the belt, So the belt goes, the belt actually goes that way through it, like my finger's going like that now. Hopefully you can see that. So we'll put it on the belt. Goes in the middle of the of everything. Now, this is again, I would prefer to do this slightly different, but I can't. Now this is the problem with doing everything at home. I haven't got the right tools with me. But we are not starting this engine, so, and when I'm building it properly, I will be doing it in the shed. So we put the lock nut on. Now, we have to turn this tensioner clockwise. So as you can see, the tensioner goes clockwise, not anti-clockwise. But again, it's not gonna really make that much difference to us for this particular setup. So I've got an adjustable spanner, which again, I wouldn't prefer to use, but I've got no choice. And then for the actual bolt, I'm going to use these pliers. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to turn this until it reaches that magic number on our mark. And hopefully, the two top cams don't move. That's kind of what I need to happen. So, I don't know if you can see that, but that is going up. I'm going to move it to 10, which is there, and then I need to lock this off. This is <laughs> quite tricky, because again, I'm not using the right tools, but... Now, that is locked, and my marks haven't moved, which is good, so that means we're timed correctly. What I am going to do is just maybe put this on here and tighten that up with that just a little bit more. Now, that should be good enough for what I need. We move our special tool. I love that. <coughs> now, we should be able to turn this engine a couple of times, hopefully now, hopefully it will turn. I'm not 100% sure if it will turn because it might lock up on us. But hopefully it will turn. What I'm gonna do is just turn it four revolutions. That's all I need. I don't need to really go any more than that. That's if it will turn. I don't know. If it doesn't turn, we know we definitely haven't got enough clearance. If it does turn, we still might not have enough clearance, but hopefully it's going to turn. And that, that will tell us whether we need a thicker head gasket or basically what we need to do. So, but again, if this locks up, now if it locks up, you're not gonna do any damage because you're only doing it by hand. 
So if it doesn't turn, we know it's locked up and we know we haven't got enough. Again, you have to turn it clockwise. But what I am going to just make sure is nothing slips because I'm not really happy about this bolt, but it should be good enough to do what we're doing here. So well, this bolt's going to want to screw in a bit more. It's actually screwing in the bottom um, pulley because it wasn't fully in. So that's still okay. Just going to be it's going to be harder to take off the pulley. I was hoping the pulley wouldn't go in. But not to worry. Now, the moment of truth, it's moving. Let's just see what happens. I can hear a bit of compression and I can feel it. Now I think, from what I can feel, we haven't got enough clearance. I think I just heard that maybe the, the valve's just slightly touching the um, pistons. I can hear the plasticine, I think, kind of squish. That's one revolution. So it means at least we should get a mark on our plasticine to allow us to know how much thicker we're going to need a head gasket. If it wasn't turning, that would obviously be a lot worse. Compression sounds good and certainly feels good. That's two revolutions. It's three. And that's now four. I'm just going to set this in the middle now, which is about there. <laughs> now I've got two spark plugs out so the full compression isn't going to be there, but we should hope to get an idea. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the time belt and I'm going to take the head back off. There's no point in filming that because it's just one bolt here, ten bolts on the top. I'm going to leave the cams in place and then we should measure the plasticine and see where we're going. Fingers crossed we're okay though, so here's hoping. Now, I haven't looked at it yet, I promise you. Um, I'm a bit scared too, to be honest. <laughs> now, there's two kind of worst case scenarios. Well, one of the worst ones would be if all the plasticine didn't stick on the actual um, pistons and it's completely gone, then I'm not gonna get a proper test. Hopefully, that's not the case. Obviously, the other case is that the, it's too thin. We're looking for at least one mil. We have to have a minimum of one mil squeeze gap so if we've squeezed that plasticine by over two mil we're in trouble if we squeeze it by a mil we're okay we'll measure it afterwards but what i'm really hoping for now is that the plasticine hasn't come off completely and you know i'm not going to get a full test i'm going to take off the head Now, we have a slight problem because the plasticine has come off on more or less all of them, which is a nightmare. But looking at that, we might still be okay. Let's get the camera moved in a bit more so you can see. up and see now as you can see we can see the stripe patterns so here the valves have hit there and there but to be fair they don't look like they've actually hit that much we can see the stripe pattern the valve is hit here and here there and there we're definitely okay on the inlet side I would say we've only just touched but on the exhaust side, yeah, we might have a slight problem on the exhaust side. This one is destroyed, so I can't do anything with that one. Might as well take that one off. Move it to the side. Um, 
This one on the other hand, to be fair, does seem quite good. And you can actually, hopefully the camera's showing up that stripe pattern right there. Can you see that? Yeah. Right there on the plasticine. So I'm going to move that to the side. I'll measure that in a minute. This one, yeah, only just hit on the inlet side. So we definitely should be okay on the inlet side. Um, this one should be a good one to measure as well, to be fair. So that's if I can actually peel that back. You have to be very careful now because we don't want to make that squash any more than what it is. Now, just move that plasticine because obviously you don't want any plasticine in your engine. I'm going to lift up the other two. Now, see this is why I did it on all of them because as we can see this strike pattern I don't know if it's going to be very good. This one is very good. So this one I think is just, that's gone. Um, yeah, I don't think we've got enough. I really don't. I think this is going to be my best one to measure. So, now we've got that all off. Just kind of give you a little bit clean. You don't want plasticine in your engine. Now, let's see what the measurements are. Right, as you can see, I've got everything on a chopping board. I'm gonna use a measuring device to measure it. So I'm just gonna measure the standard let the standard thickness of the stuff we use, which I know is, I think it's like 3.3 mil. So we'll just put that in there. Yeah, 3, 3.3. 3.4, 3.3 mil. So that's the that's the thickness we put in. And obviously, as you can see, we haven't got that thickness in all of it. What I'm going to do is be very careful. I'm getting a sharp knife, and on one side, I'm just going to cut through where it's actually squeezed in. Now, hopefully, the camera will show this up. Now, I don't know if the camera is going to show that, but you can see the indentation of the valve in that. Hopefully it's coming through. If it's not, you'll see when you obviously do it yourself. So now what I'm gonna do is get my measuring device again, and I'm gonna put this in it, and basically, can you see that? Now I'll just let that go up. Be very careful that this doesn't just shoot up and squash it completely. It can be quite tricky, so I'm just gonna put it in there, and slowly but surely go up until it grabs now we're 1.3 mil and actually 1.3 mil is okay I think the minimum is 1 mil but I'm just going to check all of them now just to kind of be on the safe side so again I'm just going to cut through you obviously have to be careful when you cut through, you don't squash squash the end of it because that's going to give you a false reading. But again, I'm going to try and show on camera. I don't know if it will come through, but basically, I don't know. You can see the indentation on that plasticine, how it squashed it to one side. And it's the thinnest part, that's what I'm measuring. So the thinnest part of it. So. Now I've got my 1.3 mil. I'm just going to put this back in through it and see it now again. To be fair, 1.34 mil. So I'm just going to see. And that's tight. So that's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through all these and you can see my gauge says 1.34 mil there. That was the first one I did. So I'm just going to, I've, I've set it so I've just locked it there. 
and when I'm pushing the plastic seam through I'm seeing if it's basically that last one was kind of hard to get through so I know it's maybe even a little bit more maybe 1.4 mil so I'm going to check all these we'll turn the camera back on and then we'll go from there now I've done them all and it's looking quite good um, it's your exhaust side that normally would put a, a bigger impression on your plasticine but it's a good thing just to check them all that's why I marked each individual one because as you can see number four cylinder didn't particularly go very well you just got four chances if you just do one and the plasticine moves for whatever reason you're kind of in trouble so I just like to do all four just gives me a better chance now from what I can measure again I'm hoping the camera's picking this up it's just so difficult to see but you can see the indentation on the plasticine and um, when I've measured it, we're basically, we're about 1.34 mil, um, maybe slightly thicker, maybe 1.3, 1.36, but it's looking like about 1.3 mil. Now, from memory serves, I think I should be okay up to about 1 mil. I think that's the minimum. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to double check on uh, head gaskets now, because now I know basically where I need to come from um, I know I've got a 1.5 mil head gasket so I'm going to see what head gaskets I can get and we're going to go from there but I'm going to leave it for this video so in this video we've worked out our, um, our valve clearance now again you can do this with any engine you want when when professional builders are building engines you know especially high horsepower rally cars they'll be basically doing this all the time they don't leave anything to chance and they're trying to get the piston and the valve as close together as possible because that's where you really get your power from um, and in high performance engines um, the valves are always open because uh, you've got big dish cutouts in your pistons and stuff but again we won't really go down that route because you don't need to but for a normal road car you don't want that because they're hard to start and all the bits that go along with it so we are looking quite good so I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that and I'll leave it there for this video and hopefully on the next video well the next video we'll, we will be building it properly whether I use the head gasket I've got at the minute, I don't know, but we'll see. Helps, thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.